a snap. Hey, Holly. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I come, I, yeah. I was looking at my phone and then it completely slipped my mind. Yeah, I'm here. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Rio Corra. Ooh, that was a struggle. Rio Corruk. That was still a struggle. Rio Corruk. There we go. I wrote those a little better. I've got my water ready. So. I've been seeing a lot of threes, a lot of sixes, a lot of nines lately. How you doing, Holly? <laughs> um, and I was thinking about the nine being the end. And then the three and the six, the catalytic three, the harmonious six. Um, and I was like, let me do a little three, six, nine. I think I'm going to use the wild unknown. And I want to do something else too, but I don't know what. What's the smallest? I have the energy oracle cards. Uh, I'll start with these and then I'll see. So it feels like the three and the six are going to help us get past the limitation that's a nine. Um, and it's very, so yesterday I did a read, um, Eve, hola, como estas? How are you doing today? How are you doing, Holly? I don't think I asked because you, you beat me, you beat me in here. <laughs> um, the three and the six help us get past the nine and it's almost like there's the thing that calls to us from the other side which is very sort of yesterday um, with the eight of wands, the nine of wands, the ace of wands, the princess of wands, and then the ace of pentacles. So you just got home from the gym. Hey, I need to go to one. I rushed home so I could go to the movies at four, but we're going at seven. So I've been going on walks after work lately. Um, so yeah, let's see. I'm going to give these a few more shuffles. And then I'll cut and I'll pull off the top. I'm using the tinier tarot so I can get more cards. Just waiting for five. You got to go to the store at five. Oh, are you like working from home today? It's almost five o'clock. All right. So one is judgment. Okay. Can you see that? Two is the eight of wands. Three, I'm going to do two threes, is the four of pentacles. Four is the emperor. Accurate. Five is the daughter of pentacles. Six is the five of swords. We're just going to go all the way through these. See, this is why I'm using the smaller deck. Seven is the Ace of Pentacles. Eight is the World. Nine is the Three of Pentacles. Oh, snap. What? You can see these. <gasps> yeah, okay. Treadmill humor. <laughs> oh, I can use an oracle card. I forgot. Because the way I was originally going to do this is I was going to do a few of them. So it's not too late. 
I have Oracle cards. I have the Mausolea Oracle of Souls. Is this the only Oracle deck I have? Uh -huh. I guess it is. I guess I'll be using the Mausolea. I don't feel like digging for the Energy Oracle cards. This is the one through nine. And then I'm going to pull another one for three and six and nine. Or I could just do like this. Nah. We're going to see. We're going to fill it out. We're filling it out. I put them all in a row. It's because it's like it's something that we experience or we go through numerically, sequentially, one by one. But at the position of the three, it has an interaction with the six that has the ability to take us past the nine. So the 10 is going to be at the bottom of the deck. Or the number after nine. With the base 10, the number is 10. But this is the number after nine. And I guess I'll put it on the five because why not? The Ten of Cups is under that, so. Guaches. Yeah. I know Russ has a Tesla spread, but I've never seen it. I mean, I've seen him use it, but um, we'll see if it's similar or not or whatever. So Hades came out with the Leopard King at the bottom of the deck. This is so funny. So y'all remember a little bit about my sometimes <laughs> messy life. My Venus is an Aries in my 12th house. Okay, don't come for me. Um, so I did that whole Venus and witness protection and the witness protection program thing or whatever, right? Oh, that's the overhead light. Darn it. I'm going to have to go turn that off. And it was like Venus got turned down by Hades. And so she's not feeling like herself. So she's going to go to Mars so that, you know, she can feel beautiful or whatever again, because she doesn't handle rejection well. Tell me why. In my literal real life. In my real literal life. <laughs> I am somebody's Mars. But I don't even want this person. There was a point in time when I did. Um, like when I was in high school. And then like 2015. The end of 2015. Um, we called ourselves almost sort of trying to do whatever. It didn't really work out. Um, and it's very much a non-starter situation, right? So there is this person in that person's life that I think they really want. And it's on and off again. It's interesting because I thought that they were friends, but whenever they were like, oh, let's date, that person was like, oh, like, I don't think we can be friends or whatever. So I see on Twitter, I've been seeing kind of, sort of, but... Um, what Mars has opals? I didn't know that. Um, so I was on Twitter the other day, and that person, Venus, we'll call him Venus, uploaded this like three, four, five tweet thread that was like, you know, now this is where the assumption comes in. It was like, how do you, I don't understand how you can be friends with somebody for so long. And then it's like you talk for a few months and then they just randomly ghost you. And then they come back like nothing's happened. And keep in mind, this is literally my friendship with this friend. This has been my friendship with that friend for a hot minute since I graduated from high school. So I was like, okay, this is a little bit of the pot calling the kettle black, but go off sis. Um, and then he was like, I guess he got blocked or whatever. But lately, recently, he's been kind of sort of like Venus has been. Um, how do I talk about this without putting myself like all the way out there? Venus has been working on her fitness. She's been getting herself together. And I thought, you know, oh, it's just a, it's a thing because Venus is not very fit and I'm not very fit. We're, neither one of us are very fit uh, individuals. 
Um, I'm not going to say that Venus was working on her fitness trying to get at Hades. I don't know. Um, but, you know, Venus will send me a picture. Venus will send Mars a picture of her, like, in the gym or working out in various states of dress. Um, and, you know, Mars, me, I've been just, like, sending the hard eyes emojis and, like, oh, my gosh, like, you're doing great, you're looking good, blah, 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 whatever. No real attraction there anymore. Like, there's an attraction there, but it's not anything that I would, like, I'm over it. You know what I mean? And I was literally just thinking to myself, like, I'm not, like, lying to this person or, like, gassing them up. I'm just, like, you know, encourage me. I'm encouraging them. Like, yes, you're looking good. Like, I, I see the fruits of your labor. Your progress is, like, really paying off. And I'm like, wow. So anyway, I thought about that today. I was just like, what? That's crazy. I'm literally Mars to somebody's Venus, but I don't even want Venus. <laughs> so, I'll be nice. You know what I mean? I'll be like, yeah, like you're looking good because like Venus has been, you know, working on whatever. But this is not going to be, oof, we just went all the way off the rails. It's fine. I should have opened with that before I put these on the table. Um, But yeah, I'm not, I don't know. I'm not interested, so. Hopefully Venus isn't like, hey. And for me, it's just, it's never, it never got off the ground. Hades is just another person. So I I thought that Venus and Hades were friends. I was always under the assumption that they were friends. Until Venus told, because one day Venus was telling me about it, and Venus was like, you know, every now and then, because I had the type of friendship with Venus, like, we would talk, it was like after half a year to a year, between half a year and a year and a half, Venus would reach out and be like, hey, like, sorry that I just kind of disappeared last time, life, crazy, blah, 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 whatever. I'm like, that's fine, you know, because life is crazy, blah, 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 whatever, and I wasn't reaching out either, so. And Venus would always talk about an individual. And then one day Venus was like, aren't you going to ask me who the person is? And I was like, well, I figured that if you wanted me to know who it was, you would have told me and I don't want to press a pry. So then Venus told me who it was. And I was like, oh, like I thought that you two were friends. And apparently Hades was like, I like you for your body or for what you give me. I like you for this interaction, for this exchange. And I guess whenever Hades had somebody, Hades would stop messing with Venus. I don't know. It was a whole thing. And then that's why when I had my Venus return, um, uh, (laughs) my Venus is Aries. (laughs) And some stuff kind of sort of started to happen. And then Venus was like, well, I don't want to like, like this whole situation happened and I don't want to repeat it. I was like, Oh, you know, that's fine. Like we don't have to whatever, like we're both adults or like we have an understanding of what this is and what this is not. Um, and so, yeah, it was a whole thing. I think it was, it was when Venus went retrograde. Did Venus retrograde in Aries? Maybe not. I think it was like at the end of a Venus retrograde. And I was like, oof, Venus got me out here trying to play out her karmic cycle. Anyway. (laughs) Holly. But yeah, so anyway, I just realized that I was kind of somebody's as Mars. I was a Mars to a Venus. But a Mars is just like, you know, I don't know. I'm just like over it. It was a non-starter. Every time we were like, let's meet up, let's go out for dinner, let's do this, let's do that, it would fall through. And so by this point, I've already like moved on. You know what I mean? Um, it's just kind of like a, it's a non-option at this point. But anyway. You think Venus retrograded in Capricorn? It would have been, I think, two years ago. And I think it was in the summer. 
So if it was in the summer, then Venus was not in Aries. Because at most, I think Venus can be like two signs away from the sun. But yeah, so I don't know. So anyway, back into this. <laughs> so the extra card for the three is the five of cups. The extra card for the six is the four of pentacles. And then the nine is the magician. Can y'all hear that? And as soon as I say that, it stops. They were on your towel rack. <laughs> so Hades is equanimity, wisdom, and inevitability. How am I doing this? So these are the cards. One plus one is two. Two plus two is four. Four plus four is eight. Hold up, I'm going to put this on a sticky note so I know where to go as we're stepping through this. As we stepping through this, trying to do this. I have, I, lit, I don't know why I keep these sticky notes for these reading series that I'm never going to finish. <sighs> so it's 1, 2, 4, 8, 8, 16, 7. 7, 7, 14, 5, 5, 5, 10, and then back to 1. Okay. So, we start with Judgment. Then we go to the Eight of Wands, the Emperor, the Three of Pentacles. No, the World. So, from the Emperor to the World, to the Ace of Pentacles, to the Daughter of Pentacles. I'm going to put this up here and we're going to see, I'm going to try to get this to work. So judgment to the eight of wands, the emperor, the world, the Ace of Pentacles, the Daughter of Pentacles. This is it's interesting that the three and the six aren't great. Like the one, two, <laughs> the cards that aren't three, six, or nine are a lot better. Excuse me. So if we go through this, there's a decision that we reach, like judgment is made and some kind of action is taken, be it internally or externally. After that decision is made, then there is like the repercussions, consequences of that decision quickly unfold. As they're unfolding, there's something that we don't like or there's something that we realize we forgot about and so then we have to sort of take up the mantle and pick that up whatever wasn't a part of it because we didn't think to ask about it or when we were making our choices and decisions there's something that we didn't take into account and we're realizing that we didn't take it to account so now we have to you know step up be a little bit proactive or do something while we're doing something because of that it's actually teaching us how to be in the world in a certain type of way 
And with that, we have the opportunity to actually come even further into our power. Like this is coming into power. This is the exercising on that power. And while we're exercising that power, we're finding that the world works in a little bit of a different way because we're like, we're, we're playing a different role in life. And so I'm not going to say that we get a little overzealous, um, but there are a lot of things that we decide to sort of end. Um, and in that, we create a whole new set of experiences or we open ourselves up to the potentiality of new experiences. And then there comes a moment in time when um, we look around and it's like literally the whole world is new. The whole world has changed. But in that, either we come into a more cooperative relationship with the universe around us, or we reach a point where we understand our new limitation. Now that we've come stepped more fully into our own power and we're exercising that and we're removing what needs to be removed, it's like we have this whole new set of experiences but then we're going to sort of reach a point where we find out what the limit of all we can do under this is. Um, I, your next series is cake. Okay. I love that. You need to commission me for a spread to use. <laughs> Oof. I could try. You did, you use the, um, one of the spreads, was it the, the seedling? Was it the seed? I think you said you used the seed spread. Right. And you found out why you're a Virgo or something like that. I love that. I wanted to, my tablet is, um, down. I wanted to, cause I only made from the fool to the hermit. And I wanted to keep making the rest of the threads because I'm feeling like it, but I haven't been able to do it. But you just use it for yourself, yeah. I think I only used it. There was a point in time, it was like Mercury retrograde 2019. So like October, I was coming up with spreads and then I would go live. I would like come up with a spread and then I would go live in the first person to say something in the live, I'd be like, hey, I just came up with this bread. Can I use it on you? Just to see like how I like them. That was a fun point in time. I might do that again. Um, so, but this looks like really good and complete as is. So I don't understand why we would have a 369 here. Um. But the limitation is cooperation. So maybe there's more that we feel that we should be able to do sort of on our own. And it's not that cooperation is bad, but it's like maybe we just feel like we should be able to do more, but we can't. I should have thought about this a little bit. Ooh. So then clarifying the three is the five of cups. Clarifying the five is the four of pentacles. Oh, okay. So... Why do I do the things I do? Why do I do the things I do? Why? 
The Four of Cups and the Five of Cups is like FOMO. Like, we feel like we're missing out on something. There's some part of the self that we're not bringing to the table with the four, with the Five of Cups and the Four of Pentacles. Now, and I almost used the Spirit Keeper's Tarot recently. And the Spirit Keeper's Tarot, you can't stand rodeo. <laughs> He said, I can't get down with the Yee Yee culture. I might be a Texan, but uh, not that kind of Texan. <laughs> Four and five is nine. Four and five is nine. Four cups, five cups. Five swords, four pinnacles. What? <laughs> okay. There's some part of the self that we're not bringing. Oh, the Spirit Keeper's Tarot. Um, and the Spirit Keeper's Tarot, the Five of Cups, is the defector. There's something that makes us different, special, unique. There's something that makes us who we are. But that thing, because it's the grotesque. It's the grotesque, the Five of Cups. But that thing, like we didn't find acceptance necessarily within that or that part of ourselves didn't find acceptance and so it's something that we grew to hide and we shunned it and we shame ourselves for that and the four of pentacles is the conservator it's the protector and so it's like there's this part of ourselves that it's like in order to keep us from being mocked or outcast that we don't share that we don't reveal that we protect And in the defector, it's that very the yeet spread. <laughs> the yeet spread. You'll eventually enjoy this. <laughs> the country music makes you love. <laughs> so the thing is, in the defector, it's that very part of us that makes the part of us that makes us like outcasts is the part that makes us special. And that's the key to this Three of Pentacles. Because maybe it is in the energy of cooperation, but it still can't get off of the ground. And the reason that it can't get off of the ground is because there's something that the magician is repressing because of the pinnacle, because of the experience that it's had. And with the magician repressing that thing, it'll never be able to offer what it needs to offer it'll never be able to offer what it needs to contribute to get this thing off of the ground and so we actually meet this world card energy at the eight with meeting the world that's a card of completion it's almost like we stop at the eight and we don't even make it fully into the nine but not making it fully into the nine again just reiterates that like we're not able to be fully present and participating because of the things that we still sort of like hold back because of the things that we don't give because of things that we don't offer and it sort of in some ways keeps that hurt part of us from ever knowing love even when we find ourselves in a space where that would be loved appreciated admired and everything else You're sure the night of Kosovo's country music. <laughs> so beyond the nine, we have the high priestess. A and the high priestess is Persephone, I believe, in the Tarot Apocalypse. So we get Hades and Persephone a little bit, and I love that. Um The High Priestess is interesting. It's interesting that the High Priestess is here because the Emperor is already here. So it feels like everything that we would need to be able to accomplish something, we already have inside of this. And it's the four. 
Judgment, the Eight of Wands, and the Emperor. It's like this would be the type of person. Um, it's like whenever you set your mind to something, you accomplish it. You get it done. Whenever you make a decision and you're not like back and forth in that decision, you get it like this would be you. But then it's like it reaches a point where it's time for you to go to the next stage, where it's time for you to go to, I was going to say the next level. It's time for you to go to a bigger stage. Then it could be self-doubt that gets you to overly rely on other people or to outsource things that you could do. Or it could be a number of things. And it's not that we shouldn't be cooperating. But... It's almost like when we ask for help, when we reach out, we should know what we're reaching out for. Like we should know where we're lacking. And this individual would think that they're lacking in areas that they're not. And so it's almost like not asking the right questions or not asking for the right things. And so it ends in a very Capricornian energy in that way. But with the high priestess here, it literally almost feels like anything that you could envision, you'd have the power to accomplish. You just wouldn't necessarily see yourself as capable. I don't know why Hades is here. Um, I'm going to re maybe Hades is here as a as a reminder of Scorpio, uh, Scorpionic energies. Outsource things like how someone else will come up with this. <laughs> ah. Yeah, a lot of people could relate to this. But I think, well, I think a lot of people could in a way. Yeah, yeah. That's why, though, like, that's why this is so confusing. Like, I feel like this was a terrible idea just because the one through nine by itself, like the three and the six are two of the like harshest cards in this series. So it's like, you're good. Like, I don't, I don't under, like, this is like gorgeous. There's no real, there's no limit. And maybe that's what the high priestess is. It's like, there's no limit. It's beyond sort of comprehension. It's almost like you'd be able to exist in a space where there's no lag in between you, the thought, the idea, the divine, and the the plan, the action plan. But again, like when doubt comes in, it just like slows everything down. And that's when... Maybe Hades is here because it's it's time for us to put something from the past like too bad too. Oh yeah, I am I am I can be very indecisive. <sighs> I also got Taurus in me though. But like like you said, when I make a decision, I'm like, okay. Okay. Let's do one more. I'm going to use a different oracle, though. Uh, maybe I won't. Let's see. I am going to use a different deck. I've got three decks. Yeah, yeah, I'll use a different deck and a different oracle. I'm going to the Teatr at Teatr. I think that's how you say theater in Russian. Teatr. I can't roll an R. Teatr. Um, I need a different oracle deck, though. The Ace of Pennies. Look at that moon card. I'm surprised the moon didn't come up. The bottom of the deck is the Ten of Wands and the Moon, Mother of Wands, Father. Oh, look at all this Court Cup. What? Father of Cups, Ace of Cups, Father of Swords, Mother of Wands, and the Moon. The only thing that's not here is... Oh, pfft, Ace of Pentacles is right there. Never mind. I was going to say the only thing that's not here is the Pentacle. Uh, 
And again, with the magician, the pinnacle was like suppressed. Or it's because of the physical experience that it leads to some sort of suppression. Now, this same moon appears in the Knight of Pinnacles. It's the only element that we don't have a court energy for. And these are like kings and queens. So, you know, they're, they're pretty high. So with the moon and with the with the moon being the same as the moon in the Knight of Pentacles, it's just like we wouldn't even necessarily see whoever that resonated for. You wouldn't even necessarily see not only how capable you are, but how you already exhibit characteristics of someone who is not novice to the element of Earth. But again, that's not surprising because of the emperor and the daughter of Pentacles. That was the four and the five. Now, the daughter of Pentacles was the last thing that we sort of hit, but it was the fifth thing as they were laid out. I don't know. I was at work when I got this idea and... I didn't flesh it out. I also had an idea to do something else, but I completely don't remember at all what that was. So, <laughs> which are you? It's possible to identify with both charts. I think also with Hades, there is an energy of being able to do. Um, it's like thankless, thankless work. But maybe that's what makes it a little bit more difficult for you to see some of the things that you already do because no one really points it out or mentions it and like you think nothing of it. I don't know. That wasn't terrible. You ever meet somebody who's so capable and then you're just like, I don't know why you're having an issue right now. Like, you're extremely capable. But, you know, such is the life of a human. Um, I will do the energy oracle cards. Uh, oh, girl. We're going to do this. I don't know. Y'all can see my little tiny table. It's fine. I don't have anybody to impress. <laughs> <laughs> but still uh, enjoy the OBS logo as I fish out some oracle decks to use I do want to do the enchanted map oracle I'll do the enchanted map oracle with the line strider and then I'll do the energy oracle with the gilded tarot Because that's how I'm feeling now. I use the kawaii's in a minute. Or the pride tarot. Kawaii. Kawaii ne. Okay. Raw and ugly table. Oh, snap. You should do it. I would do it, but this thing is old. <laughs> it's peeled from the heat of a laptop. <laughs> I like, I drew with it. I drew on it with pencil and then tried to erase it. Um, I said I'd use these two together. So let's do this. What time is it? I got to be mindful of the time. Oh, it's only 4.53. Hey, it's almost time for you to go to the store. Distress this. Oops, who is... Oh, what are these cards falling out the... Of course, it's the freaking gosh darn Knight of Wands. This Knight of Wands is haunting me. I also kind of realized something at work today. 
Um, I've been thinking a lot about sort of like what I want and what my next step is going to be and stuff like that and the magician. Um, but I realized today that I'm content where I am. So for now, that's enough. I think these cards are even smaller than the Wild Unknowns. I don't know. Oh, snap. Speaking of Libra, we got Justice in Reverse. Oh, oh, goodness. So your number one is the Five of Swords. Okay. I mean, I don't your as if I'm doing, maybe I'm doing multiple. I don't know. Let me timestamp. I'll say 40 minutes for number two. And the only reason why I like starting with the Five of Swords is because it gives us somewhere to go. <laughs> I feel like the first one, we kind of sort of like started at the top. So there was nowhere else to go, you know? Um, Timestamps are approximations. <laughs> Keep that in mind. I have the tiny tarot and it's like many, many rider weight. Like many, 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 many. The teeny tarot or something like that. No, this way. What? There we go. So that's the one. Okay. Two was the Eight of Swords. Three is the Nine of Cups. Is that a... Oh, no, that's a five, eight, nine. I was like, is that a seven, eight, nine? Four is the Ten of Pentacles. Nine of Cups, Ten of Pentacles, gorgeous. Five is the king of wands six is the three of pentacles so instead of the three of pentacles being on the nine it's now on the six seven is the five of pentacles eight is the two of pentacles and nine is the nine of swords so clarifying the three is the six of pentacles. So we got the nine of cups and the six of pentacles. Clarifying the six is the hermit. One, two, three, four, five, six. Three of pentacles and the hermit. This is a three and a nine. For position six, we get the three of pentacles and the ninth major, which is the hermit. And then clarifying the ninth one is the king of swords. So the nine of swords and the king of swords. Uh, beyond the nine is this card. There was a huge dust devil. What? Y'all get dust devils in Alaska? The Angel of Love, 49, which is a 13, which is a 4. Bottom of the deck is Attachment, which is a 5. 4 plus 5 is 9. That is standard arithmetic, not sending math. So for this one, let me pull up my little sticky, sticky note, note. Oh. 
Seven stories high. Oh my gosh. Oh wait, wrong. So one, two, four, eight, seven, five. So this journey is the five of swords, the eight of swords, the ten of pentacles, the two of pentacles, the five of pentacles, the king of wands. I love that we're mixing in different elements. We only get cups in the three. Every element is represented on the table, which is cool. It's really swordsy, though. We got one, two, three, four swords cards. We have one, two, three, four. Hold on, wait. One, two, three, four. Five pinnacles. One wand and one cup. So this is heavy on swords and earth. It's interesting that it's heaviest on earth, but it looks like it's heavier on swords. <laughs> So the Five of Swords into the Eight of Swords. That's an energy of overcompensating. Or trying to prove something to self. And the card that came out just as a bonus overall is Justice in Reverse. So just like with these two, with the Angel of Love coming out, like this feels like someone who's on a journey of discovering that as they are, they are worthy and deserving of love. Um, the Five of Swords and the Eight of Swords feels like it's overcompensating. The Ten of Pentacles is abundance and family. It's multi-generational wealth. Then we get into the Two of Pentacles which can be about choices, but it's about balancing. So prioritizing in this sense. Um, after prioritizing, we move, move down to the five of pentacles, which feels like for whatever reason, it can't meet whatever its priority is. And then the king of wands So it feels like there's a lot of desire here it's there's an energy of overcompensating there's an energy of like wanting a lot it's just like every it feels like everything that happens in life would make this person feel like they're lacking and i don't know if it it reads like this is someone who feels like they're in lack because it's like more and more and more and more and more. Like with the King of Wands here, for some reason, it feels like the King of Wands' desires are never like satisfied. It's never satiated. It's never enough because there's always something more. Now, at the three, we have the Nine of Cups clarified by the Six of Pentacles. At the six, we have the Three of Pentacles clarified by the Hermit. At the nine, we have the nine of swords clarified by the king of swords. And when we take those into account, that brings in this like, oh, well, if I have to do something, if I want something done right, I have to do it by myself. This one is a whole doozy and a half. Because on one hand, it feels like it doesn't feel worthy and deserving. But on the other hand, it feels like it has some kind of almost superiority complex that like no one else is worthy or deserving. And so that could be a projection of one's own hurt or pain. Or it could be a projection of one's own. Um, it's like standards, I guess. I want to say rubric. 
it's like you judge yourself impossibly and you judge others impossibly. Potentially. Um, 88 degrees polluted air. Oof. I got in the car after work. It said 100 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> Ooh, the steering wheel was so hot. Sorry. <laughs> um, but, like, the wildest part about this is... With the Five of Swords and the Eight of Swords, it reads as someone who overcompensates, but it also feels like someone who doesn't see the worth in what they do. It's like it's, it would be the type of person who accomplishes many great things, but it's like it's never enough. Now, if the Ten of Pinnacles is like a dream and a goal that you have, then maybe like that brings in an element of like it's understandable if you aren't at the end of your life yet. If you're not at the end of your life, right? And then with the Two of Pinnacles, Maybe the Two of Pentacles is this constant comparison between where you are in your life right now and where you dream yourself to be. This, I would say Capricorn. It's easy to call this Capricorn um, or easy to call this almost any Earth sign. It would also be easy to call this any fire sign, but not necessarily in the same physical material way. Um But with the Ten of Pentacles going into the Two of Pentacles, it's this constant comparison. And so it's almost like it's no reason why you may feel like you always feel fall short with this Five of Pentacles being where you are. Or it's like, it's feeling like it's never there. The Three is the Nine of Cups and the Six of Pentacles. The Nine of Cups and the Six of Pentacles in combination with the Three of Pentacles and the Hermit will help you get past the Nine of Swords, King of Swords energy. So with the Nine of Swords, King of Swords energy being your nine, I don't understand that because your four is a 10. And so, again, maybe that's why seven is sitting with the five of pentacles. Maybe that's why it's like this two of pentacles, five of pentacles, constant comparison. Where it's almost like you always fall short. Because with the nine of swords and the king of swords, it feels like this is it. Like I can't do any more. I can't, I'm not going to, I can't do any more. I'm not going to do any less. And then almost like the first one, and maybe it's because instead of the Three of Pentacles being in the nine position, the Three of Pentacles is in the six, like cooperation, cooperating with others is going to help you get past, see past your cynicism. Oof. I'm not a cynic or a pessimist. I'm a realist. Okay. But it's a cooperation with others, again, with a sureness of who you are and what you have to offer because of the hermit that's clarifying this Three of Pentacles. Also with the hermit and the Three of Pentacles, maybe it's like you're not used to working with other people. And so... And it may not even be like, because it feels 
like with this being the hermit and the three of pentacles it feels like something very like maybe work related like you encounter someone who works with you on a very like real thing but in working with that individual or those individuals on this like real life thing it actually expands your horizons a lot maybe to the point of what you thought yourself capable of because of how you contribute and how those contributions when in a supportive environment leads to a different set of results than a contribution or a non-contribution in a not supportive environment um like you get to again it's like this ace of pentacles sort of outside well i guess that's the point of this right um to see what lies outside of the nine um But with justice in reverse, now it's like not only were you not sort of being fair to yourself and not really giving yourself a chance, maybe you weren't also doing the same to other people. Or maybe you could have given other people chances, a lot more chance and grace than you give yourself. Either way, it's like the chance and grace isn't given to all parties involved. Justice is in reverse. Um, and then the three is the nine of cups and the six of pentacles so it's almost like the three is realizing that your goal is like a journey like it takes a journey to get to that ten of pentacles you're not going to instantaneously get to that ten and i think with the three and the six there's also this thing that's like allowing the process of getting to that successful business that you might want to run or whatever it's like there are going to be smaller goals or smaller milestones along the way that have the power to shape and impact what that vision and what that dream ultimately ends up looking like because maybe you think or you've thought for a while that your fortune and abundance would be in one area. But as you're working towards that, maybe you've already met someone or you've already been exposed to something that holds a lot of, because the King of Wands is here, that like it really pulls on your soul. Or for some reason in that area aspect or with that person, like your passion and your zest for life just like naturally bubbles to the surface very um frothily is frothily a word i wouldn't necessarily read this as your dreams need a practical plan because this to me it feels more like your practical plan will expand your dreams especially here between these two it's like as you're being practical and being because this is already very practical it's already very like realistic with all of the earth and air energy here especially with the nine being the nine of swords and the king of swords but it feels like it's reaching a point where you dream bigger then you allow yourself to dream bigger and it's like well why would i dream bigger if i haven't even accomplished the first thing that i've already set out to accomplish Maybe also with justice in reverse, that's not to be your end goal. Not to say that you couldn't, um, <laughs> not to say that you couldn't push through it and realize it, but it feels like there's a pivot somewhere in here. And maybe it's because this could, with attachment and starting off with the Five of Swords and the Eight of Swords, Maybe it could just be a question of like, why do you want what you want? Because if it's overcompensating for something or if it's trying to correct for the lack of something, then if there is something internal going on, no matter, no amount of external success will necessarily feel that. And so, again, that goes back to the Two of Pentacles and the Five of Pentacles. But the Two of Pentacles and the Five of Pentacles, it feels like never feeling like you measure up, like constantly comparing yourself to where you are and where you ultimately want to be and never being there. And also, it's maybe to realize that it's not for you to be.
Beyond the Nine is the Four of Swords. I love the Four of Swords beyond this nine, beyond all of this, because we got five swords, eight swords, nine swords, the King of Swords, who's like, I know swords. I know all about the four and the five. But this King of Swords doesn't know anything of the Four of Swords. This King of Swords doesn't know anything of the Six of Swords. So those like mental breaks, that mental clarity, that mental reprieve and relief, this king doesn't know anything about that. But they're already so fixed in it. There is this, it's just like such a gentle acceptance with this. And I love this because it feels like that ties into the energy of the angel of love. When you no longer have to sort of compensate for or compete with yourself or others, when you can allow things to be, and it feels like that allowing things to be really comes in with the Nine of Cups and the Six of Pentacles. And I feel like your dream doesn't even necessarily, like your end goal doesn't even necessarily have to change. It's more of like the why. Because let's say that family is something important to you. Like, well, what's the point of working, like spending all of your time working, working, working when you don't even make time or if you can't find the time to enjoy your family while you're living and while they're living? It's like, don't forget why you're doing it. And this is a different why. Or I guess, like, don't forget what's important to you. Because you don't want to reach the end of your days and feel that you didn't spend enough or wish that you would have spent more. Or it's like after something happens... It's like appreciating what you have before the threat of losing it. Two. I also like the thread of generosity and receptivity with the Six of Pentacles and the cooperation in the Three of Pentacles. I think that's interesting. I think there are also, it may also be a benefit to understand the human psychological, emotional, mental sort of viewpoint. Because it feels like it would be easy for this person as they are to like not necessarily see the benefit of taking breaks or going on walks or leisurely activities. But it's like, you know, if you participate in leisurely activities, then you can be more focused at work when you're on work. It's basically avoiding burnout. You don't get burnt out. And when you're not burnt out, you're more productive. Um, like if you're a boss, if the people who work for you enjoy the environment and their space, then it's like they're going to work better. And it's like, well, I don't see the benefit in. It's almost not as extreme as a Christmas carol, but it's almost a little Ebenezer Scrooge. But I think it's just because, like, Maybe in the past you didn't have an opportunity because, again, I don't know what's motivating this almost money, 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 money mindset. Um, but maybe in the past you didn't have the opportunity to participate in leisurely things because maybe things were financially not uh, supporting of that. Or you just weren't of a mind to. But I think like taking care of the self. And if you can delegate, um, then doing that, it would it would free up your plate in order for you to begin to find balance, I think. 
And it almost feels like the balance would come rather naturally. Not to say that it wouldn't be an adjustment if you're used to one lifestyle to go to another. And you know, balance is something that you continue to find. The Two of Pentacles is here before the Nine. Uh, also with the Two of Pentacles being the Eight, maybe like making choices and decisions or balancing priorities is something that you've had to do a lot. But there's this song, I think it's like Make Time for Love. That's a part of the song. It just um, popped into my mind. Because that's why you do it, I would assume. Because there's more than money in the Ten of Pentacles. There's also the family. There's a, There's a reason why. The Ten of Pentacles includes a why. It's not the Four of Pentacles where you're just getting money for the sake of having money. There's a reason there. Okay. So that was the second. Interesting. I feel like that's some kind of like boss or CEO or something. I, don't know. I mean, with that being what it was, it's of no surprise why I would feel like it would be a boss or CEO or something. I guess it doesn't have to be a boss or CEO because we all make choices and decisions in our life to get us where we want to be. Um, some of us more consciously than others. No problem. Some of us make not choices. <laughs> I was a very like, and that's why like actually making choices new for me. Um, usually I'm just like going with the flow. Whatever happens, I'll go there. Um, but now I feel like I'm being asked in a way, or I'm just thinking like, what do I actually want? Because I'm ready to start like creating my life and building my life. But then it's like, well, what do I want? Where do I want to go? And I don't know what I want. And then I get stuck. And then I'm in my head for whatever. Bottom of the deck is the, I was going to say the king, the page of pentacles. The card that came out is the title card. The title card is the live life and find out card. It's actually this page of pentacles that came out on the EYE that gets us closer to it's like the page of pentacles gives us something it's almost like a shortcut to something but the page of pentacles gives it to us early because it recognizes that we have the ability to it's like we have the resourcefulness the adaptivity um, and the capacity for listening to figure it out, to make it work, to not be lost. It's like, you know, if you don't, if you don't know everything and you're, it's like, you probably don't want to skip a grade if you're still struggling with the stuff in the grade that you're in. Right. It just feels a little, um, expedited i guess i don't know i don't know now where is this little box oh here it is where effort meets opportunity nice excuse me oh who is that Oh, it's the ace. I thought it was the king. I don't know why I'm trying to read all of these as the king of pentacles. The ace of pentacles is behind the page of pentacles. So definitely an invitation. Definitely. Um, to living that life. And it may you may find out that it's almost like, because again, it, it feels like that in some way. If you relax a little bit, if you enjoy things, 
or if you are more present with where you are in your journey to get where you're going than having your eyes solely focused on where you're going, you may see something, you may be available for something that gets you a lot further, a lot faster, a lot quicker. It may work out better than you would have hoped or believed. In a almost serendipitous way, but I don't, I wouldn't necessarily say it's quite serendipitous. Um, because it doesn't necessarily feel well, yeah, yes, and no, it could be. I don't know. Who am I? Take it as it resonates when it resonates, if it resonates, and if it don't, then uh, don't. So, then the third, and then I gotta go, gonna go see this movie. This is one, I'm just going to say 111, because it's going to take me some time. Third, one, 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 zero, zero. Wayne, 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 zero, zero. Timestamps are approximations. <laughs> Timestamps are approximations. Unexpected visitors. Is Aunt Flo in town? <laughs> I'm going to go see Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. I didn't see the first Doctor Strange. I didn't see a lot of them. But I've been watching New Rock Stars for some reason. For some reason, I've been watching all this Marvel, Easter eggs, breakdown, whatever. I haven't watched any of the shows or the movies, but I've been watching Eric Boss <laughs> with New Rock Stars. And anything with like parallel universes, time travel, multiverse, I'm there. So I'm excited. I actually ended up um, I ended up watching New Rock Stars break down Spider-Man No Way Home because they had the three Spider-Man in the movie. Um, and that was my introduction to the Marvel multiverse. And I was like, oh, yeah. And I didn't watch Loki because I think it might have been introduced in Loki. Or it was at least core to the plot of Loki. Um, I didn't watch it, but multiverse is very much my thing. So I'm going to go see that one. And I haven't seen the greater majority of any other Marvel movies. I saw Iron Man 1, maybe 2. I saw the first Captain America. I saw the first Avengers movie. And that's it. <laughs> and that's it. You're waiting for a good horror movie. Ooh. You've been invited to go this coming weekend? Are you going to take the invitation? All right. I'm actually going to get two for this one because I'm feeling it. Why not? How do you say you only live once? You only live once. <laughs> YOLO? Have a bit of mystery. So let's go. For one, we have the tower. Okay. Two is the Knight of Cups. <laughs> the country music loving, rodeo going, yee yee. I'm just <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Let me stop. Uh, for three, we have the moon. Ooh. Four is the world. So three out of four majors. One out of four court cards. Five is the six of cups. Six is the nine of wands. 
Six has given us a nine. Three has also given us a nine because the moon is 18. Three and six are both giving you a nine. Nine and nine is nine. Nine always gives you a nine. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven is the five of swords. Eight is the star. Love the star after the five of swords. Nine is the magician. It's interesting that nine is your base magician because the first one had the magician as a clarifier for the nine. The clarifier for three is strength. The moon and strength, that's a combination. The clarifier for six is the two of wands. So we get 11 wands. And then the clarifier for nine is the king of swords. The king of swords is clarifying again. This is interesting. So the third one, it pulls on the first one and the second one. And the magician and the king of swords, in a way. I mean, it doesn't pull on it. It's just the card that you got. Beyond the nine, you get two cards beyond the nine because I accidentally pulled both of them. So let's go. Your two oracle cards are strength, believe it or not, and the wishing well. 44 and 48. 48 is a 12, which is a 3. And then your face down card is the Eight of Swords. Oh, wait, let me. Did I show you all these? Strengthen the Wishing Well. Okay. Let's see. Let's scooch these down. Try to get these in frame. Try to get it all in frame. Trying to get it, trying to get it, try to get it all in frame. So yeah, the three and the six help you get past the nine. The catalytic three, the harmony of the six pulls you beyond the barrier of the nine. I guess I'm gonna look at these now. <laughs> I already I looked beyond the nine. I wasn't supposed to look beyond the nine yet. Hey, Chaney, how you doing? You might not want to hear this one. <laughs> Oof. So the Queen of Swords and the Fool lies beyond the Nine. Your Nine is the King of Swords and the Magician. For some reason... Just right off the bat... Since we're starting with the tower, you may already be breaking out of an old nine. I don't know if you've already done it or if you're in the process of it. And I love that we have strength in the wishing well with this eight of swords. Because strength in the wishing well makes it feel like the Eight of Swords are not irrelevant, but see you, Chaney. So you go the Tower, the Knight of Cups, the World, the Star, the Five of Swords, the Six of Cups. The Tower, the Knight of Cups, the World. So with the Tower and the Knight of Cups into the world, it's an energy that 
It feels like it's easily led by, we'll say, the High Priestess. And then we go into the Star, the Five of Swords, and the Six of Cups. What's this Five of Swords? This Five of Swords. This Five of Swords is interesting. Because it feels like this knight is done fighting. Like there are no more fights, there are no more battles. But it's interesting that it still came out as a five instead of a four of swords, though. I don't know what the four of swords looks like in this deck, and maybe that's one of the reasons why it's the five instead of the four. Or maybe it's the five because it's like, although the fight might be over, It's important that you remember how to do it. The moon and strength is your three. The nine of wands and the two of wands is your six. Again, with the nine of wands and the two of wands, like this literally right here, it's like going beyond this nine of wands, giving you an 11 of wands in the sixth position. And the 11 is like both feet on the other side. The 10 is like kind of sort of one foot on both sides. Like if you, like the nine is both feet at the threshold. The 10 is one foot over the threshold, one foot behind it. And then the 11 is both feet beyond the threshold. It's like if you're walking across. This is low key wild. This is low key wild because it feels like with your three and your six, like it feels like it's already beyond the nine. And it feels like that's why the moon is here because. It's like there's no precedence. There's no precedence or precedent. Precedence. It ain't been done yet. You ain't do it yet. <laughs> okay. I feel like that's why the moon is here. But with the strength card, like you're continuously going. This, the moon and strength is, it's the eight of swords and strength. It's just like, it's not, you, she can't see it. And in this Eight of Swords, it looks like she already took the ropes off. She just hasn't taken the blindfold off yet. Because the ropes are on the ground. In the water, but on the ground. I don't know if you're like coming back to yourself because ending with the six of cups, like the star, the five of swords and the six of cups is such an interesting energy. Maybe you've had to fight a lot in life or maybe you getting to the point that you got to wasn't easy. And so you're just used to being in a combative energy you're used to like having people not believe in you or you're used to not being encouraged or supportive you're not you you're used to not being encouraged or supported but it's like all that has changed and so it feels like you may be softening And with the wishing well here, like, and that's the mask of the fool in this wishing well.
this is interesting because it's almost like you wished for a new start. You wished for a fresh start. You wished to be free of something that held you in your life. And you found it. I feel like there's not much else to say. Like, <laughs> and it's interesting that the magician and the the fool came out with the king and queen of swords. Hold up, let me let me look at your elements because I don't think there's any earth here. You have one, two. Cups. You have one, two, three, four swords and two wands. No earth. But I feel like the lack of earth for you, again, it goes back to this moon card of how, like, because the pinnacle can represent our experiences, like our physical, earthly, 3D human experience. But it's almost like you have no precedence for maybe some of the experiences that you find yourself having. Because again, it just feels like anything that you've had to work through, like blockages, you've gone beyond the nine of wands and the two of wands clarifying this nine of wands in the space of the six. Anything in your own sort of mental space you've worked through the strength coming out of the moon, number one, but also to have the eight of swords with strength in the wishing well. And then to go from the moon to the world I knew this would either be really good or questionable with the tower coming out first. But yeah, this one's really good. I think I'm just going to end Like, I don't know. Congratulations, I guess. <laughs> Is there anything else I can put on this? No, I'll just leave it. We have a hare or a rabbit on the two of wands, so that speaks of the fertility and abundance. What's interesting about the rabbit, though, is that rabbit fertility is because they're such a prey animal. They breed like crazy because a lot of their babies won't make it, typically. And so I think sometimes that can speak of um, like a fear or a lack, a lack mentality. But it feels like that would have been resolved within the space of all of this. Maybe you're retiring. With the star, the five of swords and the six of cups. It's time for you to enjoy life. And it's not that there won't be challenge. I feel like if, it, there, if there wasn't going to be any challenge beyond your nine, you wouldn't have the strength card twice. But you have the strength card twice. So, like, you're good. You'll be able to face it. Beyond the nine is the fool and the queen of swords. So... New experiences, new everything. And your nine is the magician. So it's like you've already maybe begun to experience the ways in which you work with your universe, life, reality, choices, decision-making, vulnerability, to start to create some of the changes that you want to see in your experience. Maybe you've learned to do the same for those connected to you in your experience. 
Um, but with the Fool and the Queen of Swords, it's all about experiencing now. Experiencing what life has to give you beyond what was your previous limitation. So this is gorgeous. I'm, I guess thank you for ending it on a... I want to say question mark note. <laughs> But anyway, I hope you all have a good whatever whenever you see this. Thank you, Holly, Cheney, and E for being here. I hope you're acting in alignment to like all that you wish to experience your reality. And until next time, this worked out better than I had feared going into the first one. 